The aim of this video is to help you improve your understanding of topology. And I'm going to illustrate that with a small example. So first off, I'm going to create a cube. Now I'm going to scale this down on the Y axis, like so. And I'll jump into edit mode and subdivide this. I'm then going to want to get rid of these faces and this edge right in the middle here and connect these faces together. And now we have this simple little shape that we're going to be working on. So just scale that down just a hair more. So everything I'm going to talk about in this video is with respect to subdivision surface modeling. When we add a subsurf modify to this, we know that it's going to be drawn inward towards the center of this mass, like so. So let's go ahead and subdivide this. Once we do that, we lose our shape that we had here initially, and we are going to want to preserve these edges. Now, you can use edge creases. However, you're going to want to come back and add control loops because if you're switching between programs, edge crease data is not always going to transfer. So we are going to want to come back and, you know, add control loops here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I'm just going to add a bunch of loops here. And let's just go ahead and switch that subsurf modifier off for a second there. And I'm just going to add a bunch of loops here that we're going to bevel to add as control loops. So I'll just grab this and bevel this by a value of, I guess, I guess 0.4.5. And I'll do the same thing with this one. Value of 8. Whoops, 8.5, and this one by 4.5. And I'm just going to repeat this. So once I do this, and I go ahead and activate that subdivision surface modifier and shade smooth, you will see that our edges have been preserved. So I'm just going to bump up the value of our subsurf modifier here. And you'll see that we now have this subdivided shape. Now, normally you would just stop here. And there's nothing wrong with this. Uh, if this is going to be somewhere, you know, a little far away from your camera, it's not going to undergo any kind of animation or deformation, then this is fine. However, if you're going to animate the shape, or it's going to deform in some way, then you're going to want to improve the topology. So let's take a closer look and see what we can do better. So first and foremost, you will notice, let me just go ahead and turn that off. You'll notice that we have a five-spoked pole here. And if you look at the corners, we have three-spoked poles in all these corners. And we're going to want to resolve that. Let me just duplicate this. And I'm just going to get rid of all our control loops for a second here. So I've gone ahead and gotten rid of all of that. And I'm just going to take this point here and this one, and I'm going to connect them. And I'll do the same thing to this side. And I'll just get rid of these. So now I've gone ahead and changed the topology of this a little bit. And now I'm going to go ahead and add those control loops again. I forgot to get rid of this edge here. So let's go ahead and do that. And let's add our sub one second. Get rid of that edge as well. And uh, this one as well that was hiding down there. So I'm going to take these and I'm going to bevel them. So I'll bevel this by, say, a value of 0.4. And I'll accept that. Do the same thing with this one here. And then I'm going to align them together. 
So just make sure that I've got snap active and make sure that vertex snap is on. And I'm going to then take these and I'll just align them like so. Now I'll just get rid of these. I'm just going to cut loops here at an angle of 45 degrees and do roughly the same. So I'm just kind of eyeballing this. It's not exactly accurate. And I forgot to align these as well. All right, so we've got it perfectly aligned there. And now let's take a look at what we have. So again, I'm going to go ahead and bevel this by a value of, I guess, a value of 0.85. All right, perhaps I want to make this just a little tighter. So I'll go ahead and do that. Build this again by a value of 0.9 because I just want to have a little bit of a sharper edge. And I'll bevel this as well. Bevel this one by a value of 0.45. So it's not necessary to um, be mathematically precise. All right, so now I've gone ahead and changed the topology and added those control loops. So what that's helped me do now is get rid of this pole that we had here. So if we compare these two now, we've gone ahead and gotten rid of that five spoke pole. And now we only have four edges meeting at this point. So the general rule with poles is that we want to try and keep them away from corners and we want to keep them away from surfaces that have some kind of curvature. So we've gotten rid of that, but now we've also got to deal with the three spoke pole that we have in this corner here. So I'm just going to connect this point here and I'm going to do that for all these corners that we have here. So bear with me for a second. I'm just going to move this edge back a hair. It ended up getting it's a little uneven. We'll just move this back a bit. And again, connect these two together and this one together as well. And I'll cut this in half because I only want to work on one side. So let's just get rid of this side and we'll mirror this later. So now what I want to do is I want to get rid of these two edges here and these edges here. So by doing so, you'll notice that we now have four edges meeting at this vertex here instead of three. So we've basically solved that problem with the pole that we had here. Now we can get rid of this one. We can get rid of this one. We can get rid of this edge at the bottom as well. And let's delete these as well, get rid of these. And I'm just going to speed through these. So now that I've done that, I'm going to have to add our control loops again because I got rid of some of them. So again, I'm going to have to add one here, one here, and I'm going to have to bevel these two again. by a value of, um, I guess you could say 3.5 maybe. Or I think I want it a little tighter. So we'll bevel by 0.4. So 
So again, I'm just going to go ahead and align this. All right, that ended up being way too tight. So let's bevel by 3.5. So I'm just going to go ahead and align this. And I'll just get rid of these two. So now that I've done that, I'm just going to go ahead now and mirror this. On the Y axis, and I'm going to go ahead and accept that. And now let's go ahead and subdivide this. So I'm missing the control loop in the middle. So let's go ahead and bevel that again. So we've now gotten rid of that three spoke pole that we had at this corner. And you'll see that we have four edges meeting at this vertice. So the next thing we're going to take a look at is these corners. So let's just zoom in on the first example that we had here. So I'm just going to activate that subdivision surface modifier. And if you look at this corner, you will notice that it's not exactly beveled properly. Uh, it's just sort of being pulled in and it's being distorted. And this is not what we want. We want to try and have a much higher quality bevel. So in order to do so, we've got to add an extra set of control loops. And so I'm going to go ahead now and add some loops again. And we're going to compare these two. So I'll bevel this by a value of maybe point eight, I guess. And I'll do the same with this one. I, I guess for this one, I would bevel it by 0.35. And do the same for this one, but this time I would do maybe 0.3 or 3.5. Yep. And I'll get rid of these. And I'm going to align these together. So again, just going to get rid of this other side that we have here. And I'm just going to speed through these. And I'll manually cut the one here. Let's do that once again. And so what we have done now is added an extra set of control loops. And now I'm going to go ahead and mirror this on the y-axis and apply that. And you will now notice that this corner has got a much better bevel compared to what we had here. All right. And what you'll also notice is that our reflections are going to be much better with the extra control loop that we've added. So if we just switch over to our shiny matte cap, you'll notice that our reflection gets distorted on this surface compared to this one. On this one, we have a much better reflection, more accurate one, compared to what we have here. So let's switch back to what we had in the beginning. And now 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to tighten this up a little bit more and get rid of this one and this one. And I'm going to tighten this up as well. Get rid of that. Because I want these corners to be just a little bit sharper. Yep, and so now we are looking at pretty much the same shape. However, the topology is slightly different between the two. And that makes a world of a difference. So we've gone ahead now and we've rectified the poles that we found there earlier, these five spoke pole here and the three spoke poles on all the corners. We've gone ahead and fixed that compared to what we had here. And we've also got a much better bevel. And you'll also notice that the reflections are far more accurate and they are better compared to what we have on this. So now I'm just going to pull out the annotate tool. So initially we had this shape, but it was unsub unsubdivided right and once we added our control loop what ends up happening is it almost feels like this inflated shape the surface is kind of bowing and that's why we kind of see those like if you will notice there's a very subtle bowing effect that takes place because of that subdivision surface modifier and it distorts the shape that we have and that's why we add those control loops but when we have just a single set of control loops what ends up happening is that that shape tends to bow ever so slightly and when we go ahead and add that extra set of control loops we then get that nice bevel and fillet So as a result of shifting our poles, as well as adding that extra set of control loops, we are now going to be able to animate or deform this predictably. So I'm just going to add a simple deform and switch to, say, taper. Now you can see that you can deform this without a hitch. And so I hope you learned something from this example. I hope it improved your understanding of topology. And if you would like to see more videos like this, you can support the channel on Patreon or pick up some of my tutorials or resources on Gumroad. All the links to that are in the description of the video. And with that, I'll see you in the next one.